Bigfoot Society would like to thank the following sponsors for helping make the podcast possible. The Singular Fortean Society has combined open and honest paranormal investigation and journalism since 2016. Visit the Society at Singular Fortean for all the latest weird news and more. Come with us and investigate the impossible. Welcome to the Bigfoot Society Clubhouse, where we discuss a new or old topic in cryptozoology every week. Just hang out and have a good time. I do need to let you know that by hanging out with us on stage and talking in the discussion, you are giving consent to uh, being recorded, which will be used in a future Bigfoot Society podcast, uh, YouTube video, could be anything that you could imagine coming down the pipeline. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, uh, please go ahead and move on down to the audience. Uh, sit back, relax, have a good time. Again, thanks to all for uh, hanging out. And, uh, let's just have a good time. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys for and gals for coming on and hanging out with the uh, Bigfoot Society Clubhouse. Uh, this week we have a uh, special uh, conversation discussion where we're going to have everyone um, share their favorite regional cryptid. Um, so thanks again for everyone hanging out with us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start out here. Uh, we're going to start with the big muddy monster of Murfreesboro, Illinois. So this guy, this is a pretty cool one, Midwest, so I got to pick the Midwest one. But I've got a few bullet points to go over here, so here we go. So uh, this creature sighting occurred in southeast Illinois in the year 1973, and it was reports of a loud, tall, white-haired creature uh, caked with mud near the Big Muddy River. Uh, there's a few reports of this guy in that year. So one report was from a couple uh, hanging out in quotation marks, in a car by the boat ramp when they heard loud screaming and saw a seven-foot creature covered with mud. Uh, later on after that, police found 10 to 12-inch long footprints in the area. Uh, the next evening, the creature was seen again in a field by two teens. Uh, officers found a slimy film on branches and smelled something terrible, they said. Uh, Lauren Coleman studied the uh, sightings in the 1970s, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's a, a quote from him that goes something to the effect of, it seemed more aggressive than other reports of Bigfoot seen out in the West. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's also a, a recent document documentary made about it called uh, Creature from Big Muddy, an Illinois Bigfoot story. Um and uh, that looks to be a pretty good documentary. I'm excited to see that. And a really cool thing that I found when I was doing some research on this, guys, if you go to murfreesboro.com, uh, the Murfreesboro police case file for the creature sighting from 1973 has been scanned, and you can download it to your computer. So they actually, like, scanned everything from, like, the drawing on, uh, that's like the the case file folder cover says like big muddy monster and then there's like uh sketches from witnesses there's the actual police reports you can read there's uh correspondence from um different newspapers uh across the u.s from different people uh, it's a pretty cool thing to be able to read those through those artifacts uh, and of course the most important thing is there's a yearly uh, big muddy monster brew fest that happens uh, every fall in murfreesboro illinois so if you're into that sort of thing and you're in that area southeast illinois you want to make sure you definitely catch that i think that happens around uh early october so that is my uh that's my two cents for my my regional Bigfoot for today. Um, I do see, uh, let's see, there's a few people in the room. Sarah, uh, Sarah from the American Snallygaster Museum, if you want to come up on stage with us and, and uh, share some as well, you're welcome to raise your hand. And uh, let's see. Uh, Sally, I, uh, I see you're hanging out with us as well. We're talking about regional Bigfoots. If you have anything to share, go uh, right ahead and you can l raise your hand. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to pass the mic over to Danner, uh, my buddy Danner from Conjure Dust Designs. Go ahead and uh, share your account there, Danner. 
Hey, fellers. So when talking about regional Bigfoots, quote unquote, I was actually stuck between two cryptids. The first, and keeping it completely regional, I'm from Ohio. You know, we're known for the Loveland Frog. Everyone knows him. Everyone loves him. 1955, salesman spot him on the side of the road, a small three-foot humanoid slimy creature with a little wand lit up at the end. That's all fine. That's all dandy. But I think at the end of the day, I have to say my favorite regional cryptid is actual, like my favorite regional Bigfoot is actually Bigfoot himself. I don't know if you guys all know this, but Ohio has a pretty big, like, Bigfoot presence out in Salt Fork near Cambridge, Ohio. And uh, we actually have a couple Bigfoot conventions that happen, like, twice a year. They're really great. I go over there all the time. Uh, all the little, like, dispersed camping spots are named after Bigfoot sightings. It's really, really cute. And Bigfoot just has, like, a great presence out there. And it's a beautiful area, too. But it's a great little convention. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the Salt Fork area is definitely on my list and the conference out there. I mean, it just sounds like there's so many connections that uh, are made every year there, especially uh, a few years back. The 2016 was one was a pretty huge deal. But uh, thank you for sharing that, Danner. Um, you can go ahead and choose the next person you'd like to share there. Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to go with uh, Alexander next. Cut. Hop, hop out here. Cool. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, that's a very cool story. Obviously, Ohio Bigfoot, pretty synonymous. The, the Ohio Bigfoot Conference is awesome, by the way. Great time. I went to just the one in 2019, I think. That was my first time, and I would definitely recommend it to people, uh, you know, when it starts kind of coming back. I think it's supposed to be on for this year. But sure, so I'm going to pick uh, uh, kind of not a New England one. I usually do New England stories and uh, I'll do a regional Bigfoot from another area, uh, which is one of my favorites, the Mogion Monster. So the Mogion Monster is a Bigfoot-type creature said to be seen in Arizona. So uh, it's, there's this area of Arizona called the Mogion Rim. It's where the Colorado Plateau sort of intersects and uh, creates this really interesting area just a few hours north of Phoenix, about two and a half hours north of Phoenix, Arizona, where uh, there's like this massive canyon that rises up um, and the lowland area is sort of forested and there's mountains. And then when you get up on top of the rim, it's just flat as far as you can see. It's the same type of environment in terms of uh, a lot of pine trees and uh, tons of wildlife on either side of the rim. And there's a local Bigfoot in that area known as the Mogion Monster. And it's been seen primarily since, uh, you know, I guess Native American times. There are reservations not too far from there now, but that was traditionally land of various tribes. You have the, the White Mountains of Arizona not too far from there. But then you have settlers, you know, a lot of the Wild West sort of stories, mining days, there's definitely some tales from them. But the name Mogian Monster actually came from the 1940s and 50s. There was a Boy Scout camp called Boy Scout Camp Geronimo. And they had these incidents where they'd be out camping in the backcountry and had, you know, something stomping around their camp and stealing their food and, and making noises and terrifying them. You know, some people had seen it. And that's where some of the incidents started. And that was prior to the word Bigfoot or Sasquatch really being popular. So the, the locals called it what they could, and they named it the Mogion Monster for the Mogion Rim in that area. Uh, Payson, Arizona is the nearest town. And I actually got a chance to go check out uh, Payson and the Mogion Rim this past July when filming with Chasing Legends. We just put out an episode on that a couple weeks ago on the Mogion Monster. And it was really interesting seeing that environment. There's a lot of uh, black bear, a lot of elk rattlesnake, um, all sorts of animals in that area, mountain lions especially. Uh, not really an environment in Arizona you'd expect. It was in mid-July there, and it was about 50 degrees every day and raining, as opposed to Phoenix, which was about 110 degrees at that same exact time period. So we were up there, and we had a bit of a wood-knocking experience while out on the rim and doing some night investigating. And it's a really cool regional story. It's very a little known. There's not a lot of stories about the Mogian monster. The uh, One of the more famous kind of uh, pieces of evidence, I guess you could say, is uh, by one of the guys we interviewed, a cryptozoologist named Alex Hearn, who's there in Arizona. He claimed to have found a toenail of this creature and submitted it to a DNA study. I think it was part of either the Melba Ketchum study, but there was some news stories done about that toenail. I mean, he found like this big toenail out in the wilderness, kind of an interesting story. I don't think there's ever been a Bigfoot toenail, aside from that, that I'm aware of that's been discovered or claimed to be discovered. So it's a very cool uh, Bigfoot a regional Bigfoot. There's not a lot known about it, but it's definitely pretty awesome. So 
Yeah, so that is my regional Bigfoot, the Mogollon Monster. Very complicated spelling. It's M-O-G-O-L-L-O-N. I think I spelled that right, Mogollon Monster. Very confusing, but check it out. So with that said, I'm going to pass it on to Kenzie. Cool. Hi, guys. Um, I'm actually really glad that you chose that one, Alex, because I had no idea how to pronounce it, and I am glad because now I do know how to pronounce it. Um, Anyway... So my favorite regional cryptid, and I'm going to do a New England one because that's just true to who I am. Um, it's definitely Hawkwudgies, but since this is like Bigfoot centered, I'm going to just talk really briefly about wood devils. I know you guys have heard me like talk your ears off about wood devils before. Um, so I'll just like do a real quick uh, description of them and, and stuff. But so wood devils are uh, New Hampshire's like Squatch adjacent cryptid. Uh, they're know seven seven eight feet tall uh gray in color and very lean and like thin and their whole deal is that they you know hide behind trees try really hard not to be interacted with in any way um and if you get too close they'll scream at you um yeah i don't know i just think they're they're really cool and like i kind of relate to to not wanting people to get too close to me and then screaming when they do because that's i don't know it feels right it was like a really good way to keep people away from you. <laughs> um, but since I have talked about this with you guys a lot already, I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. And if you want to know more, I'll certainly tell you, but that's where I'm going to leave mine tonight. <laughs> and Kenzie, oh, and uh, you can it. go ahead and, and choose uh, someone f- to go next. Okay. I'm going to pass it to Greg. Hi, uh, Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm Greg. Uh, I am going to go with uh, Momo for this. Uh, the Missouri monster it was first seen in uh, near Louisiana, Missouri in 1972. There's a, a rash of sightings. Um, it was reported to have a large pumpkin-shaped head uh, it's very hairy with glowing orange eyes. Uh, the fur was described as black and it was said to be about seven feet tall. Um, so one of the reasons I love uh, the Momo story is the Small Town Monsters uh, documentary on Momo uh, with the, the reenact by uh, Cliff and Bobo it's just it's just the best I just <laughs> I love that movie um, it's, uh, the, the I guess the sightings kind of uh, faded off with time um, uh, I don't know if they actually did uh, raise a posse and chase it into the woods but um, that was that was in the SPM. Uh, I guess it was more like a horror, like a mock horror movie that they kind of made to go along with the documentary. Um, yeah, so that's about it for me. Um, I guess I'll, uh, I'll call uh, Chris to the stage to talk about his favorite regional Bigfoot or cryptid. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. Um, Well, I'll tell you, the cryptid I was going to choose, being from the Boston area, I love my New England cryptids, and Bigfoot-wise, I had either Berkshires or the Wood Devils in New Hampshire, and and I personally like the Wood Devils more, Uh, but Kenzie, that was all, you know, all that information you gave was was all great on the Wood Devil, but I do have a possible encounter that I'm not entirely sure what it was. Um, I was hiking with a friend in the winter of 2018 in the, uh, the White Mountains National Forest in New Hampshire. Um, and that's about 35 miles from uh, Coos County, uh, New Hampshire, which is where a lot of the Woods Devil sightings occurred. Um, after a few hours of, uh, of hiking in the snow, it's just there was a blizzard a couple days before that at around 2 p.m. Uh, we heard what sounded like, and it sounded like it was a little bit of distance away. It was this loud, guttural growl that echoed throughout the forest. We were the only ones in that area, as far as we saw, the place that we parked, there was nobody else parked at that entrance. Um, 
And I know we've, we've heard coyotes and, and other predators of, of New England, and we're pretty sure uh, we know those sounds. So, and this one sounded a lot different, a lot deeper and louder. Um, and so we thought maybe it was a wolf. And doing a little bit more research, you know, we found out that wolves have been exterminated from uh, New Hampshire and Maine and that area since the early 1800s. Um, even though a, a couple sightings of wolves have been documented in the Northeast, a little bit in the 90s. But um, I'm, I'm still, to this day, I'm still a little bit stumped as to what I heard. I know it wasn't a coyote. It was, it was something, though. And if it was the woods devil, I mean, that's, uh, that's what we want, right? So, so that's my tale. Thanks, guys. Oh, and uh, let's go, uh, Tate. Let's hear your story. Last but not least, I guess. Well, not last, though, because uh, we got Jeff from Strangeology that just showed oh, up. So, whew. Thank God. Feels yeah. Nice. <laughs> Chicken taquitos. Oh, yeah, hey. <laughs> um, okay, Jeremiah, I was kind of confused on the topic. Like, it's a regional, like, just whatever region of Bigfoot I want to talk about or something? So it's, it's more the, the thing I tried to get across was like, you know, you've got the Mogollon monster is like, it's pretty much a Bigfoot, but it's like to the Mogollon rim. But like, you know, if you want to spice it up a little bit, that's fine too. I'm not going to, you know, you, well, just, Tate, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'll stick with Sasquatch, which All is right. commonly a Pacific Northwest thing. And I have no idea what to talk about. Um, I'll, I'll let Jeff go. I need to, I need to get my thoughts together. All right. Uh, well, I guess, has anyone talked about the, the white hole, uh, Bigfoot yet? Nah, dude, go for it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I mean. Being that I am from Vermont, and uh, also, in case no one knows me, I'm Jeff from Strangeology. Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube now. Uh, so, yeah, so the uh, the Whitehall uh, Bigfoot uh, case is, has always been kind of, uh, it was one of the earlier um, ones I had heard about since uh, I'm from Vermont, and I, I live <laughs> probably, I don't know, two hours from Whitehall, maybe less than that. Um, and it's something that, you know, Monster Quest and, and all those shows have covered over the years. But one of the um, the most uh, known and, and, I guess, talked about stories, um, there was like a wave of, of sightings in the late 70s and early 80s. And uh, one of the most well-known ones was a uh, police officer, uh, Brian Goslin, was out on patrol one night driving around the outskirts Wait, of did White. Did you say Ryan Goslin? <laughs> that's what Ryan I heard. Ryan Goslin. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Brian Goslin. Imagine. Twin. Yeah. Ryan yeah. Gosling. Baby, baby driver on the... Uh, yeah, hey, Sasquatch. The <laughs> <laughs> um, so... He was out, out on patrol, uh, and I don't know if anyone's ever been to, to Whitehall, but it's a you know a pretty pretty small town. I've driven through there a bunch of times, stopped at their pizza place while head, heading down down uh, the New York Thruway uh, on road trips. But um, so he was he was out patrolling all, along this road called A Bear Road, and it's like late at night, and I guess this massive humanoid figure came out on the road and he described it as being like a hairy man-like creature with red eyes and it lumbered out of the woods about 30 or so feet in front of his uh, patrol car and it looked like to him at least that it was about seven to eight feet tall about 400 pounds so your your typical you know standard uh bigfoot sasquatch um description and i guess he got so alarmed that he got out of his car and he pointed his his uh, spotlight at the the creature and also aimed his his sidearm <laughs> 
at it, but he, you know, he didn't shoot or anything. He was just like so full of fear that he was just kind of like, oh my God, what's going on? Um, and, you know, in that moment, the, the Bigfoot or whatever it was, um, it let out this like unearthly scream and then just barreled off into the woods at like breakneck speed (laughs) and um i guess it it left some some uh, tracks behind um but you know uh, over over the years uh since then there have been more sightings um even this uh, uh goslin's dad and his brother apparently also saw it as well um and then in 1982 there was another uh, police officer named dan gordon uh, that had his own encounter on uh, route 22 while he was on patrol uh pretty close to lake champlain like the uh the southern tip and he also saw this eight foot tall um ape like looking being that ran across the road in front of him and then it went on to uh, climb up at this steep embankment with like little effort before disappearing. Uh, but this one, it, it wasn't like uh, a hulking <laughs> beast, like uh, the one that Goslin saw back in, in the seventies. This one, I guess was a lot thinner, uh, had like gangly arms um, and you know <laughs> definitely had some super human-esque abilities but um this this cop didn't get out of the car and and aim his gun he he just <laughs> uh you know got out of there so um yeah those are <laughs> that's kind of like the the brief overview of the uh the white hall uh stuff but i guess there's like a festival now and so that's that's kind of cool you know bringing bringing people in so yeah that's my that's my spiel (laughs) that is awesome thank you jeff and if people haven't checked out strangeology on youtube jeff put out an awesome new video about top five cryptids in west virginia very well done uh bravo thank you thank you tate you got one more chance there buddy i thought it was three strikes and you're out well i can i can push it up to three if you want but (laughs) <laughs> okay so i guess i guess for regional i'm gonna go with pacific northwest and then so i'm gonna stick with like a specific area in the pacific northwest and i'm gonna stick to my guns and go with uh, the whole bluff creek area humboldt redwoods and stuff like that um i don't know i, I think it's pretty cool because um I, I went to, I can't remember where it was. I, th- I want to say it was at the 50th anniversary of the Patterson Gimmel film. Cliff was given a presentation and he was talking about footprints and he thinks that the same footprints that they're the same footprints that I think maybe Jerry Crew casted and then, you know, Bob Titmus and Roger Patterson casted on several occasions were probably from the same subject you know, Patty or some offspring of hers. So I think that's pretty cool. And then um, knowing a lot of people that have encounters up there, it's it's really awesome to be in a place where, you know, the name Bigfoot was coined. And not too far, I think it was in Canada, somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, or maybe even Washington. But the name Sasquatch, that's where that came from. That's Canadian. Yeah, okay, Canadian, that's right. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really all I have. That's awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Tate. That's awesome. I am kind of bummed that our uh, our friend left the room because she was from Australia, and I was going to totally ask her about the thylacine. But it looks like oh, she had yeah. to leave. Uh, it would have been awesome. But what she do we... had big? She had armchair Bigfoot hunter. In yeah, Ohio, and so. from Australia, I was like, Ugh. but such is life. What do we think of that whole thylacine? Uh, have we have we been keeping up to date with that, guys? Or what do we got going on? So it seems like the typical cryptid drama. Mm. I have yeah. literally no idea what's going on with that. I haven't so really got anything about it. I saw I saw the uh, the video uh, from that guy the other day. 
um, talking about it and, you know, just getting some hype, hype behind it. But, um, the, uh, the expert that they sent, uh, the, the trail cam photos to. So if, if you don't know this, uh, group allegedly got pictures of the Tasmanian tiger, uh, a mother, a father and a juvenile, which I guess the, the mother and father, the breeding pair was, uh, kind of ambiguous as to what they could be but the the juvenile looked like it had the telltale stripes um but then i saw on reddit uh was it this morning that i saw it i can't remember it might have been yet yesterday <laughs> uh but apparently uh the expert whose name escapes me right now um nick mooney that, nick mooney thank you i guess he he said it's unlikely that it was a thylacine and it was uh, more uh, likely to be, um, uh, geez, and I can't remember the name of the creature, but it's kind of like a, a wallaby. Pad, type pad melon. Pad yeah, melon, I think yes. you're right, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> they, they look like little wallabies or kangaroos uh, that are exclusive to Tasmania, right? So, yeah. But then, so, uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> the gr- the gr- so the group, actually, I remember last night I was checking that video and I saw the group shot back. I think they've since deleted it, but they put a pinned comment on that video about neil talking about the excitement saying you know they thought it was kind of weird that uh that this nick mooney guy rushed off to the media right away within 24 hours and they said that they were apparently having other experts like veterinarians and other people look at it and they said it was seven versus one opinion and they were like he said it's unlikely but not impossible so they're kind of going with that angle and it seems like it's turning into a whole uh debacle they need, oh, wow. they need a body. <laughs> they need a body. It's true. They need to have it's that true. DNA the standard. Science. The only thing science is accepting is a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a specimen. Mm-hmm. It's wild, but like Forrest Galante has been doing a good job of kind of, that's where I found out most of my updates. He seems like he's following the drama. For those that don't know, he's extinct or alive and he's done episodes is looking for the thylacine. Awesome, awesome guy. Not really cryptozoologist, but kind of on the fringes of it, I'd say. I think um, I think Forrest Gump would make a great cryptozoologist. Well, I mean that goes without <laughs> saying, Tate. But uh, Forrest no Galante is a TV host, right? Yeah, he's yeah. he's yeah he's an awesome guy. He's like a conservationist. He's a biologist. He's done, I guess, a bunch of cryptozoology because he's found extinct species. But no, he also said that apparently the Neil guy who was in that video actually went on a local news station in Australia and um, showed the photos to the host there. And the host, it was a radio only interview and they were like, what are we looking at here? We, we can't tell what's going on. So it might not be as clear as people think, but they're saying they're gonna release it on March 1st. So I guess it's to be seen. Um, people are kind of getting their hopes up and getting their hopes dashed. But this Nick Mooney guy is supposedly one of the foremost em- uh, experts on the thylacine. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, and people get really, oh, sorry, Jeff, go ahead. Oh no, I was just <laughs> just saying interesting that's all <laughs> oh cool um yeah it is totally interesting um people people get really excited when they catch something on a trail cam and i think if if they're looking for a thylacine they're gonna draw that picture in their head and come to uh their own conclusions without solid evidence i mean it had marsupial traits, according to uh, the original guy in the video. But um, our brains kind of see what they want to see. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's confirmation bias, a form of that. Yeah, like when I yeah. see a hot babe, I always think she's into me, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> Chicken taquitos. Confirmation. Every bias. time, Tate, I'm playing that sound bit. Every do time. It, do it. Do it now. Okay, here it comes. Chicken taquitos. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to do a quick shout out to our good friends Yami and AJ, who just got engaged this, within the last week. And Yay! Oh yeah, totally. Where's your clap? Both. Where's your celebrated clap sounds, Jeremiah? Um, I had to get rid of that one to put the chicken taquitos sound in, so. Well, that backfired. <laughs> counts as a clap. It counts as a clap. 
chicken taquitos. Yeah, no, it's super pumped that uh, <laughs> that Yami is now engaged. She got engaged at like uh, was it Disney? World? What's the one down there? Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. That's I'm right. I'm pretty sure it was the Magic Kingdom. That's what the yeah the castle is in the background of the picture. That's Wait, true. Florida. Yeah, Florida. Yes. Yeah, I have it on good authority. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, she's near uh, Disney. She lives in the same cloud. Hey guys, before we uh, finish the recording part of this, do you mind if um, I have you kind of run through and uh, in case people are, this is the first clubhouse, kind of like uh, how people can follow you and stuff like that? Can I announce something when I go on my turn? Because I got a couple things I want to. Tate, I would love that. Just make sure you get really close to the mic when it's your turn so that we can we can hear you. Is this good? This is great. Go ahead. Okay. Go. <laughs> That's Tate, go ahead. No, I'll go last. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I Greg, go ahead. I, I uh, run All the Weird on Instagram. I co-host a Star Wars podcast called Order 66. It's on Apple Podcasts and Buzzsprout for sure, and I, it'll be on other ones soon enough. But yeah, no announcements for me. Just uh, we'll. Uh, are we choosing the next person or? Why not? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, um, I'm gonna bounce it back to my boy Jeff. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm Jeff. I run Strangeology. Um, I've got a podcast that you can check out pretty much most places that you can listen to podcasts. Uh, it's on Apple, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, Google, the like. Um, I also run an Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, now TikTok as well. Uh, and I also have a YouTube channel uh, where I kind of post my podcast episodes there too uh but i actually also as jeremiah said earlier uh, i posted a uh, my first youtube edit video today uh, featuring a top five list of west virginia cryptids which was a lot of fun to make uh so you can find me all over the place and uh i'll probably be continuing to burn the candle at both ends <laughs> hmm. um let's see who's next uh how about chris All right, thank you so much. Um, my name is Chris. This has been a lot of fun. I hope to do more of these and talk to you guys again in the near future. Um, I, uh, I have a, a cryptid-related podcast, believe that or not. Or, um, it's called Alien Zoo Podcast, and uh, you can find me on Instagram. And uh, you know wherever you listen to podcasts, you can probably find my show. So thanks again. And uh, let's hear from... Kenzie. Okay. Hi, I'm Kenzie. Um, I host the Crypto Chats podcast. It is on Apple, Spotify, Google, Podbean, and YouTube. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at either the Crypto Chats podcast or on my personal at Cryptid Daddy. And I'm going to say go, Alex. If I can unmute my mic. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Alex Pettig. I'm a filmmaker, adventurer, crypto, zoology researcher, a uh, bunch of stuff. Um, I have a YouTube channel called Sasquatch Out of the Shadows, where I do a weekly live stream Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern, where we bring guests on. We talk about all kinds of Bigfoot-related stuff, a lot of other videos on YouTube. I'm also part of Small Town Monsters and the Chasing Legends. And you can find me, the easiest place to find me is petakovmedia.com. That's P-E-T-A-K-O-V media.com. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to... Jeremiah, I guess, or should I go with Tate? Tate, go go Tate. Let's do Tate because if people don't know what I do, then uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, that's fine. <laughs> All right, Tate, go go. For okay, well, I'm a very small independent filmmaker, kind of. Um, I host the Bluff Creek Project podcast. Um, my name is Tate Hieronymus, and I have no relation to the infamous Bob Hieronymus, and I am a human <laughs> being. Also, um, I, I, I do have a few announcements. Um, 
I am working on a new short film or a new documentary film. So if anybody cares to help out with that, they can contact me through the Bluff Creek Project podcast Instagram. Um, also, I guess I told you Jeremiah, but I'll just tell everybody this. So I have a I have a date of March 18th. Um, I'm interviewing Terry Carnation, and he. Terry Carnation yes. is Rain Wilson's character. <laughs> so I'm interviewing Rain Wilson as Terry Carnation. It's fantastic. Terry Carnation is a very big in like aliens and ghosts and Bigfoots and all things paranormal. That's amazing. Very cool. It's... What's the uh the, the upcoming documentary about if you want to just give a little thing on that, I don't know. So yeah, it's called um uncovering the truth of sasquatch which i don't i mean it's kind of a dumb title and um but i'm just kind of going around just talking to people can you guys hear me okay yep keep going man yes my connection saying it's bad but anyway um i'm interviewing a bunch of people that just you know i'm just getting their take on what bigfoot could be and stuff like that and I actually have a thermal video that I have with my, like from my own experience that's not public yet. And I didn't really want to do anything public with it until I can do like a pretty good investigation. So I'm going to be filming that, uh, investigating my own thermal film. So that'll be in it. And I actually have sleep paralysis every now and then, now and again. So I'm going to see if there's a correlation between sleep paralysis and Bigfoot, whether it's like misidentification because of sleep paralysis. Or are people really seeing something trippy? So those are a few topics I'm going to be touching on in the film. Very interesting. That's awesome, Tate. Thank you for sharing all that uh, good news. I hope that you, when you interview Terry Carnation, that you do it 100% uh, interview oh. him as Terry Carnation and don't reference I'd, Dwight or Rain at all. That would be amazing. But I totally am. I might that's do up to you. Surprise for a blooper on that one. So. Nice, nice. Um, thanks for for hanging out. All we are gonna uh, we're gonna stop the recorded portion of the show. But definitely everyone that uh, shared here tonight, um, it'll be in the show notes. You can check out all their stuff. Definitely, uh, they're up on the stage for the reason. Uh, for reason, they're all great people to follow in the crypto zoology niche. So definitely check them out. But uh, thanks for listening and all. Have a great night.